Welcome back, traders. Second portion of our show, market movers, and we got some market movers on the downside. Dennis, starting with Oracle, disappoints the street. Yeah, yeah, uh, disappointed there after the bell. I think everybody was shocked by this one. Uh, Twenty six thirty three trading right now after. In 17, so Oracle, which historically usually does pretty good on their earnings, uh, missed by a landslide, it looks like here. Stock has good support around 25.90. We bottomed out there, Joel, back a couple of times in September. So I think that may be where it wants to go. We're trading 26.33 right now, so 40 cents away. I think you might find some support there. What do you think, Joel? Yeah, confirmed by the pre-market activity, a bunch of lows between 26.15 and uh, 26.30. It's really been holding in there for quite a while here. In fact, uh, a few minutes ago, it traded over 100,000 shares in that area. So um, it's uh, it's starting to get thick down there, used to 25.90 to 26. Uh, if we break below that area, it's going to probably look look for even more support at 25.48 so that was that was a high back on um, August 26. Coming back on the upside uh, we haven't spent much time over 26.60 this morning so um, if you're shorting off the open looking for just a continued blast down I think uh, you see some scrambling above this 26.60 level. Walgreens reported earnings here this morning. Joel W A G stock is now trading down two points thirty one fifty now. Quite a bit of size going off down here as well. Those guys that were trading C V S W A G probably not happy at all with this pair of performance this morning. Obviously, as uh, C V S had great earnings the day before, rallying over three bucks. Now Walgreens disappointing earnings and falling two bucks as a five point uh, five yeah. points is broken out in the wrong direction. So hopefully, add it on the other way if you're. A pair trader, and then you're pretty happy. But probably some people are pretty disappointed with the Walgreens earnings, considering how good CVS's were. Joel, yeah, very surprised uh, to see that as well. Um, it bottomed out in the pre-market here, Dennis, at 30.92, just under that 31 dollar level. Uh, pretty good volume associated with that as well. So, I'd, uh, if we in fact get back down around 31. Uh, good support. I'd look for a bounce there. Um, nothing on the charts really to support that. Uh, better number on the charts would be 3034, uh, which would, was a low, uh, back that we had in November. Uh, so if that 31 level doesn't hold, uh, you know, you could, ch could challenge that 3040 to 3050 area. Um, coming back on the upside, uh, trying to hold in here at 31 and a half, uh, but, uh, if you shorten off the open, you get a run up to the 32 area. I uh, wouldn't be real surprised about that. Uh, quite a ways away from yesterday's low, so I don't think that's going to come into play at 32.54. Research in motion here, Joel, R-I-M-M, -M, uh, getting a pop. At first last night on saying that Amazon had sniffed around back in the summer about acquiring this, uh, obviously nothing came to fruition with that. And then there was another report coming out that saying Nokia and Microsoft had sniffed around as well. This is, they weren't saying that they're sniffing around right now, though. They were saying that they had sniffed around. So, you know, if I'm reading that report correctly, it looks like they sniffed around and decided not to buy. But the market, anytime you get any type of rumor that, you know, Research Motion might get bought out, they just rallied the stock. So 1370 trading right now after closing at 1252. It's up 9.5% here. Obviously, if, you know, this, you know, no, if nothing comes to fruition here in the next few days, I would think this starts to drift back down. But but, um, you know, there is a risk. If you're shorting the thing, it could get bought out. You know, the valuation is attractive, but the business model for research and motion themselves, I believe, is broken. So if they don't get bought out, I can, I can see it continuing to drift lower, Joel. Yeah, look uh, look for a test here of the uh, the three day high. We're currently trading right now at um, we're trading at thirteen seventy eight. You had uh, a thirteen seventy four high uh, the day after the earnings uh, came out. So you got a nice gap to fill between thirteen seventy four and fourteen eighty. Uh, we in the pre market here, Dennis. Uh, we've bumped up against uh, this thirteen eighty seven level. So look for some initial resistance there. If you don't get strong follow through here and above the fourteen dollar level, uh, then I look. I have to concur. I looked for this uh, to drift back down and perhaps test the uh, fifty two and multi year low here at twelve forty five. 
Uh, Delphi Group, uh, DFG, getting bought out by Tokyo. It's Tokyo Marine Holdings in Japan. Uh, they're buying it for $43.87 a share. Plus, they're going to give a dollar special dividend. So, on my, I, that looks to me like a 44.87 takeout price. So it's trading 43.94, 43.95, locked in right now. I'd expect obviously it to drift up to that 40, uh, 487 price over the next uh, uh, next month or two as it you know approaches the takeover date when they announce the actual date. Um, probably not much more technically to really say about that, though, because the price is determined there for you. So, what, you are uh, traders. That's your price. Oh, go ahead. Do you have a stock? Do you have a similar stock taking them over? No, I think I, it's in Japan. I think it might even be a private firm. I'm not sure. Was Tokyo yeah, if they're Marine public holding. shorted, if they're paying in 75 percent, 75 percent premium for a financial company, wow, I'd, I'd love to see the books on that one. Yeah, that's. Uh, I'm shocked at that takeover too. How heck of a premium paid for a company that you know? No, I'm not in love with financials, especially you know Delphi Financial. But regardless, they must see something they like. Uh, Jabel Circuit, which is JBL, they came out lowered guidance after the bell. Stock is trading down significantly here. Nineteen oh, nineteen dollars even trading right now. Actually, after closing at nineteen ninety five, this is where it was bottoming in the after hours as well. It's right around this nineteen dollar area. If it gets below that, though, Joel, it does open up. Yeah, you did. And, and the initial news, you did have a spike down to eighteen fifty. Uh, we've really been. Hovering above that level since trade between eighteen eighteen and uh, and nineteen dollars, uh, so I think you start to find support between uh, eighteen eighty and eighteen fifty. Uh, looking at the charts, Dennis, uh, you had an eighteen nineteen low uh, back on uh, November twenty fifth. Uh, so if in fact we do pierce that that eighteen fifty level, uh, you're running into more support at eighteen nineteen eighteen thirty three. Uh, coming back on the upside, you did get one straight pop up here to 1950. Uh, so if you're looking to, you know, short this thing on a little bit of a pop, uh, that could be the area to look at. Uh, that also um, concurs with uh, yesterday's low, which was 1942. Uh, so you will find a mound of resistance in that area. SEE, which is Sealed Air Corp. After the bell, announcing a secondary offering. They just priced this a few minutes ago. It's going to be 1660 as a secondary offering. Those secondary offering prices often like put a lid on the stock. So even though you know it may not be a technical number, when you have a fundamental number like that, where they're pricing a secondary issue at 1660, that number often becomes resistance. So I'd use a 1660 area as kind of a magnet uh, number. I'm looking at the chart here, though, Joe, and six or looking. At the, the book here, 16's got some huge size down there. So if this thing was to drift down into the, it might be a good buy. Yeah, it looks like they're kind of pricing it on the cheap here, uh, looking at the long, longer term aspect of it. But they got a price where they can get it done, right, Dennis? Oh yeah, you got to give them a little bit of incentive for the people to subscribe to it. So that's why they usually price it below where it closes. So 1660 is the price. Um, moving on here, Joe, we've got uh, Salesforce.com. Kramer was talking about that after hours, saying, you know, and, and basically what we've been saying, too, is high P.E. stocks are definitely out of favor here over the last few months. The has been getting hit. CRM has been no exception. It's been getting hit here for the last couple of months. Trading now just in front of $100.99, so just above that $100 critical psychological number. Um, takes that out. Could get interesting to the downside. What do you think, Joel? Yeah, this uh, the stock has really fallen off here since uh, trading 130 not too long ago. Uh, not a ton of volume associated with this move down. Um, our low in the pre-market is 145 uh, I think uh, you know using that 100.45 uh, all the way down to the figure should be a good number. Uh, looking back at the longer term charts, if in fact that 100 doesn't hold, I don't see a lot until uh, 97, 92. Call it the 98 level. Uh, those lows that we had back in uh, October of 2010. Uh, looking at it in the pre-market, a lot of consolidation here at the 101 area. Uh, if, in fact, it can pop above that 101 area, uh, 102.36 uh, yesterday's low should definitely uh, 
put a lid on any kind of rally. KB Homes, which is symbol KBH, uh, just announced earnings here this morning. I actually beat the number. Uh, pretty big beat there, Joel. Stock's trading $8 right now for closing at 774 so it's getting a good lift on a day that we're down a couple bucks in spews. So it looks like the home builders may have some relative strength here today. Obviously, you probably want to watch other stocks in that sector. Um, but overall, uh, KB Homes going to have a good morning here, Joel. Yeah, kind of a follow through for some of the news that we had yesterday on the, um, on the housing. Uh, looking at that stock, uh, gonna run into a lot of trouble here, Dennis, between 8.30 and 8.40. Uh, those, uh, were some highs that you had back earlier in the month. Uh, looking at it in the pre-market, we have not, uh, we've made a high right in that area, made a high at 8, 8.21. So expect good resistance here from 8.21 up to that 8.30 level, call it 8.35. Uh, coming back on the downside, if you get anywhere near yesterday's high or the close, 1779 is 7.79 or $7.80 level, uh, should be good support in that stock. Kind of a quiet morning. That's but a quiet morning on, from the S&P perspective, uh, down a buck and a half now. So we've chopped around a little bit, but we're really back to where we really started uh, this session at 4, 4.30. So uh, what's your closing comments on the S&P, Joel? i uh, got to keep an eye on that Globex slow, Dennis, uh, 12.29, to see if we come down and get a sniff at that. Um, also, coming back on the upside, uh, we're real close to settlement in yesterday's high. So uh, after trading as high as 12.49 and as low as 12.29, I'd be looking for sellers at yesterday's close and yesterday's high. Well, that's our show for today, folks. Uh, we'll be back with you tomorrow.